that's basically a single DPS solution to beating 221. Uh, and, you know, we only really brought one built out tank and one healer. So this really is the, the ultimate solution. So you only need one built out tank. You only need one built out healer and you only need one DPS. Plus Dolores, you're good to go. And Laurel, of course. Fastidious. Fastidious. How the heck are you, everybody? I'm Fastidious. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to day 90 on our grind for glory. We're getting up there, folks. So we've got a big one today. On day 90, I beat my first Gear Raid 21, Gear Raid Stage 21. And that, of course, as you can see, is Gear Raid 2 Stage 21, GR2 21. Uh, so let's get right into it. I'm gonna do a full walkthrough guide here. Um, I'm gonna go specifically through the comp I use, but I will try to provide substitution heroes, alternate heroes as much as possible. Um, and you might have to bear with me because this, even though this might be the easiest 21, 221 compared to 121 and 320, it might very likely is the easiest. The reason it's the easiest is because it largely comes down to technique and timing. It's a little less hero and gear dependent. You do need some great heroes and you do need some great gear, but it's not as intensive in the hero department and gear in gear department as the other two. However, because it's so technical and there's so much timing, it can take a lot of attempts. And trust me, I know. Uh, not only did I beat uh, 221 yesterday for my account, I beat it for someone else's account on a takeover, and then I beat two 220s on two other takeovers. So I did it from four different accounts. I was grinding uh, Gear Raid 2 yesterday. And let me tell you, you can definitely get it done, but it is painstaking. So hopefully we just nail it on our first try right now. I'll take you all through it right now. You're gonna see a lot of 1X because the timings are so, so precise. But the power dominance, we've beaten it. Just to show you, we, we were farming this now. Let's turn it off and let's hop right in. So folks, this is the team I am using. You're seeing I am running just one DPS and that is going to be Comet. He's 72 KBP. Here is a sense, he's going in a curse set, does not need to be a curse set. He's got two ancient pieces. It's actually the same gear I've had on my Comet for like two months. Um, it's pretty interesting. This gear used to be the only good gear on my account, so I'd move it all around. Now I have good gear on some other people too. I'll just show Arrogance right now. Uh, so Comet is not, so now he can kind of mostly, most of the time he wears this gear. Uh, let me show you the stats. We're talking just over 15K attack. It's a bit low, but we are bringing Dolores, so it's more than enough. Uh, the attack speed is quite nice at 262, a 1.7 interval for Comet. I'd say that's the highest you want to go. Lower, if you can do it, if you can build more attack speed on him, is even better. Uh, if you could get him to like 1.5, 1.6, that'd be fantastic. I did crit cap him, uh, and the crit damage is very healthy at 296 and a half. Uh, it's a solid build, don't get me wrong, but it's not crazy. And if you do the strategy I'm going to show you, it doesn't need to be crazy. It just needs to be a good build. Uh, you need a solid build on your Dolores, uh, and then there's lots and lots of timing. Uh, I will just start right now with alt alternate heroes. Uh, the ones I've used instead of Comet successfully, uh, mainly I use Hotsit. I think Hotsit is probably the best, surprisingly, for this fight. You need a good build on her, probably at least as good as I had, had on Comet, if not better. But you don't need Laurel uh, because she, she gets powered up so quickly with that basically drop and ult kind of thing she's got going on in her kit. I obviously don't have Hotsit, but she's very easy to use. So if you're looking for an easy solution, as long as you have good gear and you have a good build on your Dolores, you can use Hatsit. The reason I say you need a good build on your Dolores is because you see my Dolores, as you might expect, isn't in ancestral, ancestral Teachings. However, it's very likely what I've done to make it work when I do Hatsit comps is I put her in a Spirit Horn to give her increased uh, initial rage upon deployment. That's something to think about. Those are probably the two that I think are the best. Virna obviously would work. I haven't tested yet, but obviously uh, a strongly built Virna paired with a Dolores would work perfectly fine. Uh, and actually, shout out to Lucifer. He beat it yesterday with Silas. So Silas is very much single target. Um, however, it's basically AoE, as Lucifer put it, because he's just literally one-shotting every single mob, even at 221. That being said, Lucifer does have a Virna, so he's unlocked this Bond skill, and he has a pretty good build. Uh, where's the bond skill? Here you go. Mine is obviously locked. I don't have Virna, but it's it's definitely you can do it with Silas. You'd probably need a better build than what I have on him now. If you want if you want to gauge it a bit, this is my Silas build. I can test it out if you guys want to see. I do not think my Silas could pull it off. So I think you're going to need like at least 14k attack. Um, I probably 1.2 is the highest you could go. You probably want 1.1 would be safe. Maybe 1.0 if you could do it. And then I would say here with the crit damage, you're going to want over 300% crit damage. And obviously this crit rate is a, a joke. My Silas, I do not think could do it. However, you have a great Silas, you could do it with Silas. Basically, you just need some kind of S tier DPS. 
uh, and then a well-built Dolores, and that can cover your whole DPS for the round, as you're gonna see. Moving right along, I'm only bringing one healer. We are gonna use kind of the the Volca strategy to take people on, put people on, take them off, deploy them, uh, re re retreat them, what do you call it, retreat them, revoke them from the battlefield. Um, so we're just bringing Vortex. You do need a solid Vortex build. There was someone I did a takeover for yesterday. He asked me to beat 219. I beat 219, I beat 220, and I was like, as a surprise, maybe I'll beat 221. His Vortex was not good enough. Not that mine is so good, so I just wanna show you the stats. I do believe my Vortex has basically like the minimum stats you need. So definitely you need over 40K HP. I think that 43 or really 44 and up range is good, but probably 42 would work as well. Defense, I've totally ignored. The reason I think his HP matters, and I'm telling, actually I know it does and I'm telling you, is because he's gonna get hit by the, the marching stone men that come up of each side. And uh, th that hit hits really hard on 221, much harder than 220, and he will die. And then if he dies, they're gonna, it's not that he, you really lose the healing, I mean the healing's important, but then they're gonna go for your next platform units, because they go for the first place platform unit, once he dies, they go to the next place one, so then they kill your Dolores, and then they kill your DPS. So you really need him to stay alive. So this is quite important. And I'm gonna show you one other important thing that you guys might be overlooking because I was overlooking it during the takeover yesterday. I'd say for attack interval, this is good. Uh, I think it's very easy to hit this 2.1 second. You see, I only have 133 additional attack. Um, you could probably get away with 2.2 seconds. I haven't tested it, but just go for the 2.1. It totally works. I've gone lower. I've gone all the way as low with uh, takeovers to 1.9, but 2.1 works fine. Heal effect, get as close to 100 as you can. You do not need to go over 100 and you'll be good to go. So the thing I was saying I need to show you that you might overlook because I overlooked it is consider your Pantheon, right? Um, so I was building on someone's account, basically the same build you just saw in my Vortex, but their Vortex kept dying. That's because I put a lot of work into my Pantheon. You can see I've got 18% HP bonus. That's significant. Um, so if you've neglected your Pantheon and this is only like 8% or 10% or something, perhaps you need a bit juicier of a build than what I just showed you. Um, so that is something you should always consider when you I'll try to show off my Pantheon. You guys can rewind and pause it. I'll try to show it off whenever I do a guide video on like this, because you might be like, my stats are the same as Fasty's stats. Why don't they work? Maybe it's because you don't have as developed a Pantheon. Uh, it's definitely something really important that I don't think it's talked about enough. So let's go back in. Volca does not matter. If you can get a speedy build on her, uh, it's nice. If you can get her an inspo set, it's kind of nice. But you can see I've just kind of ignored uh, inspo set, invig set, invigoration set. I, it gives inspiration essentially. So I always think of it that way. Um, but yeah, it's nice, but she's really just gonna be a, a warm body. She's like a meat sack that is gonna take hits. And she's really there for her passive um, from A1 uh, where you get the reduction in deployment, redeployment costs. So this is really why she he is here for the reduction in revival times by 25%. This would not work without her. So if for somehow you're trying 221, but you don't have A1 Volca yet, I don't think it's gonna happen for you, but I think very, very, very few people, if any, could reach that point that have not already gotten their A1 Volca. So moving on, uh, let's go right down the list. Here is my Dolores. Uh, you need Dolores for the strategy I'm gonna show you. An exceptionally well-built hat sit might be able to do it even without Dolores, uh, but I don't have hat sit. And certainly my Comet could not do it without Dolores. I'll show you her build very quickly. We went broke and set. You, as, if you guys missed my video yesterday, you can ignore attack speed. So the fact that I have attack speed is just because I was looking for other stats and that happened accidentally. But you can see 12 and a half uh, K attack. I think you need at least 12 K attack unless your DPS is built tremendously well. But hitting 12 K isn't very hard, especially if you have if you ever A4 or higher. Um, and then for Rage Regen, you see here it's 44%. That's just because this is my general Dolores build. This is the same build I use in my guild boss. You don't need any Rage Regen because she's gonna be dropped. Then we're gonna use Laurel to pick back up her Rage with a little Laurel cheese. And then she's gonna come right off the battlefield. So you really only need attack. So just pump that attack as high as possible. It's quite easy. Now for Decimus, uh, well, Laurel, I'll just show you. I think I have her in an Invig set. It can help, it's not necessary. Uh, it's a bit random where it goes, because uh, she's got a big range. It's gonna go to someone in her range. Um, it is what it is, but if, I mean, you gotta put something on her, right? Uh, so I figured I'd put an Invig. You could also go Rapidity. Speaking of Rapidity, let's go to Decimus now. You got her. I, I, I've done it without him in Rapidity on takeovers, but it's so much easier if you put him in a Rapidity set. So just do it. Uh, I like to just throw some tankiness on him. So I go for like some kind of life force with HP bonus. That's maxed out. So he gets the big flat stat. And then I sort by the highest flat stat HP. So not great, but you know, it gives him a touch of tankiness. So he's got like 22K HP. Does it allow him Does it allow him to still not get one shot? I don't think so, but this is how I like to, to build him. And it definitely did allow him to not get one shot at lower levels. So if you're trying to watch this video with, with tips for 219 or something, that could help. 
Moving right along to our bottom row, Wrath is literally a meat sack. I don't use him for anything else. So this is my build because of what I use him in Guild Boss. Ignore it. He's just a meat sack. We, he's there. Uh, I, literally, he's there for no reason. Honestly, I'm looking at it now. We don't need Wrath there at all. Um, he is just uh, a total meat sack. It really doesn't matter. Then we have got Baron over here. Baron is quite important uh, because Baron uh, has, of course, unyielding. It's really nice to have this maxed out. He pairs super well with Decimus when we get those second and third rounds of Roly Polies. Um, his stats don't matter too much. If you can make him a little tanky, it's nice. Mine is pretty tanky. Not that great of a build. Um, the 89k HP is good. The 4.9k defense is not. Uh, but he really is there just to take advantage of the unyielding and get hit by the roly pull at least twice. You'll see it in a second. Uh, moving on, Regulus does not need to be Regulus, by the way. It could be any tank. Olog would work perfectly fine. My Regulus is just already geared up and running. I did go Guardian set, but you can see this piece isn't even maxed out. It's not a perfect build. 160 HP is quite nice. Not too hard to do with a maxed out Legendary Defender, though. And then 7200 defense is quite nice. It's fine. Honestly, Honestly, these guys don't see the floor that much. They're, they're just there because you need some form of tankage. Uh, so that's my Regulus. Uh, you do not need to match those stats. You saw my comment. And then finally for Dallin, uh, easy peasy, just go for Rapidity set. She's basically going to be out there early. You're going to see to generate us costs. Um, and then after that, she's just a warm body. I will say, I did a 221 takeover yesterday where I did not use Dallin. You don't have to use her. However, you're gonna need some other warm bodies, some other meat sack, as I like to say, to get hit by the roly poliolis. Might as well be her. She's incredibly low cost. Actually, I just did a pull session and I, oh no, she's, it's not gonna count. If you get her to A4, you lose another cost there, which is fantastic. Uh, but if, even if you get her in a rapidity set, her cost goes down to, let's check it out. Oh my God, attributes. Uh, her cost goes down to 11 minus one, right? So 10 costs. It's very nice. She's a very quick deploy meat sack. Uh, you're gonna wanna have be stacking costs. Uh, so she, I think she's a great choice, but you don't need to use her. You actually don't need to use any cost generation. For me, it just lets me exhale a bit and it makes the run easier. But if you wanna not do that, you do not have to do that. So that basically covers it, guys. Let's head into battle. Like I said, there's a lot of moving parts here, a lot of special timings. Uh, so we really gotta make sure uh, hopefully I get on my first try, but if you see cuts, it's because it's very easy for something to go wrong. So I'm going to try to get on my first try. I'm going to do a lot of 1x. Basically, first thing I do is I place my DPS, so that's going to be Comet. Let him load up. Between him and a tank, that's all I need to beat the first round. I will also deploy Dallin at the end uh, to generate costs. It works out. It's a very tight, but it does work out that she can get it off. So there you have it, Comet. And I like to use Baron because uh, he's only 18 costs as opposed to Regulus here who's 19 costs. Saves me one coin of cost, <laughs> one deployment cost, which is great. Also, because of his unyielding, even if they kill him, which they likely will, uh, he's not going to die. So I won't lose that cost by him dying. Uh, so very easy. Maybe with someone like Olog, you could do it, but he might not... Uh, as he, he could die, and he, maybe he won't get his shields up in time from his silver shields auto. Uh, but you see, I got down down slightly late. However, however, I found as long as you do it, once it's at 14 costs anymore, the timing won't work out. You're still gonna be fine. So let's quick trigger here on the ults. So you can see Baron with that enormous shield, 100% will tank it. And the second these guys die, we can pick these two up. And now we wait on Dallin. Let's go back to 1x. And right about now, we should get some coinage. There you go, we pick up and look. So now we're all the way up at 67 coin. Without Dallin, you'd be looking at like 52 or something. It's not the biggest difference in the world, but for me it helps. Maybe it's even like 56, 57, because you're losing the deployment of when you, you're losing the coins when you initially deploy her. But that wiggle room really helps me a lot. Now, for my most frustrating part of the run, always timing out these Decimus hits, I'm gonna leave it fully, fully, fully on one X here. Um, when I do it myself, I switch between 1 and 2x, but here, let's just leave it. You want to get it right when he's about to enter that square, so Decimus kind of pushes him back there. If he goes behind, it's not going to work, all right? So we go, we go, we go, and now this is the one I hate, because just for me, it's very hard to see. Uh, the second they make contact and you see a number, let's see, or you see a, there you go, there was a little flash, that's how you know, and there was the number. Let's get Regulus, and now the second this guy in the front throws his arms up, now we can place Regulus. So now they die instantly. Now we place our healer. So we're going to place Vortex. And now we can start placing everyone. Uh, by everyone, it's not going to be much. You're going to see. Um, I go for this in a very interesting way. We're actually not going to use a tank here. The, I need to save the cost. So the way I'm able to do that, um, of course, is going to be by using Dolores and Comet to absolutely destroy these fellas. So let's wait for uh, Comet. I could have already put Laurel. You might be wondering why I'm not. It is because she's in an Invig set. So by going like this, I give a one in three chance, or basically one in three chance it's gonna land on Comet. 
and two and three chance that it's gonna land, land on Comet or Dolores. So let's see, it didn't land there, it did land on Dolores, excellent. We can immediately pick her up, and now we're ready to rumble. The second these guys stand about just outside of Comet's zone, I like to trigger Dolores. Now the second we can, we're gonna trigger Comet. So there goes Comet, and you can see he's gonna take care of business. Occasionally he's not able to kill these guys fast enough, but usually he can. Uh, yeah, he's doing God's work right now. Excellent. And once those first round of guys die, the ones that throw the rocks, we can already pick up, uh, what's his face? We can pick up Vortex. And we can actually, now that we're in the zone, we can pick up Regulus as well. Uh, so you can see the timings are going to work out really close. Let's get it. One more hit and we got this thing. Excellent. Pick up, pick them both up really quick. Uh, you need to pick them up really quick because we want them coming back as soon as possible. So the, the quicker we revoke them from the battlefield, the quicker they will be revived and we can redeploy them. So you can see we're looking really good on cost here, 87, 88, 89, very good stuff. The second he does the streak, just to save your own peace of mind, you can already put down Baron. Once the animation starts, he, Baron's not gonna get hit. And now we go to the annoying Decimus stuff. This is, we got two more annoying Decimus things. Uh, the timing on this is very hard for me. Uh, I've done it a lot, so I've gotten pretty good at it, but you can see, if you want to let him go as deep as possible, because then it makes it easier to take the second hit before his unyielding, before his unkillable wears off. But if you wait too long, he goes behind. And if he goes behind, it's over. You've lost it. And then you have to start the run over. So we'll keep it on 1x here. I like to click on and off to try to get myself in the zone. Oh, no, no. I was trying to click there. Okay, there's, there's the animation. My finger slipped. Um, but what you can do now is you wait. The same exact thing. The second they throw their hands up, there you go. Let's wait till they're both in the box. Now we can drop Wrath. And now we can pick up Baron. And I love to use Dallin because she's only 10 costs. And if you've got her Awakened 4, she'll only be 9 in a Rapidity set, which is great. Wait till they're both in the box. Drop them so they instantly die. If anyone doesn't know, every time they take a hit or they hit something, they lose half their HP. So those first hits that they each took into Decimus and then into uh, Baron on either side, they lost half their HP, both the Roly Polio, so all four of them. And then when you drop the Wrath, you drop the Dallin or whomever you're going to drop for your comp, they take that same hit again, right? So then they lose the other half. Now we're up and running. So now you really got to keep an eye on your tanks. Uh, so I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. It's going to be pretty tight here, folks. So here comes Regulus. We can drop him. Right when these guys get up there, now I'm going to drop my Vortex. And then what I have to do here, guys, uh, is I'm going to use Decimus. You can also have brought another tank or something, but I'm going to go for Decimus. I hope this works. Um, I've also done it with Olog as a second tank. So let's wait, let's wait. And now I can take a little peek. So there's a 1.3 seconds on Dolores and 1.5 on Comet. So let's get ready. So there comes Dolores, there comes Comet. Here comes Laurel. Let's immediately pick her back up. It's gonna be really, really tight here. Trigger, trigger. Let's get that going. And now we just wait on Decimus. Down goes Vortex, so very, very tight. We gotta get the kills in time, but really not good. I might have to start over. Uh, really tight. I think I'm just gonna lose it. Come on, one more hit. Flip, dude. Okay, guys, I don't know if you caught it, but on that last thing, before that last run fell apart, I kind of stopped talking for a second. It was pretty subtle, I guess. I don't, I don't know, at least I noticed it because I was the one talking. But it's because when I placed Regulus down, I was like, where's my Olog, right? And what I remembered is, when I originally did this run, um, I did not use Wrath, right? Because the only reason Wrath is in here is because for my auto run, I'll just show you very quickly, I use Arrogance. So let me just show you that really quick now, which you can go for some kind of nightmare comp, but there you go. I use Arrogance because he speeds the whole run up once you've got power dominant. So let's exit, exit that now. So the way I actually did it, um, not that I needed Olog, but Olog reminded me, okay, Northerner faction, oh my God, that was my mistake. Uh, so I'll get right into it in a second, guys. Let's head back into the fight and you'll see, I don't want Wrath, what I actually need is Dagna. Uh, she was the ticket, and I'm sorry that I forgot that, guys. Uh, I need uh, some kind of Lord, because that's the last little extra I need so Vortex doesn't die. Uh, so now with Dagna, now it's gonna work. I'm gonna enter the fight and I'll pick it right back up right before the fight failed last time, and we'll just keep going. All right, let's pick it up right there. Uh, so here you can see we'll use Dagna instead of Wrath. And now we can pick up Baron. 
So this should be the difference in, set, in terms of the tankiness uh, given to Vortex. Here's hoping it works. You can see Dagna tanked that like an absolute champion. Uh, so we can actually pick her up and save a little extra cost that way. Uh, so let's wait, let's wait. Right when they reach there is when I like to let out Vortex. Here comes Regulus. So yeah, he's looking slightly tankier, should be slightly meteor heals. Let's wait on Decimus, let's try to maximize this timing. And now we keep an eye on our people here. So we're at 0.5 seconds for Dolores. Let's get her down, let's get Comet down. You guys see the timing on this thing is super, super fickle. Uh, let's go, let's see where our Invig went and it didn't go on comment. All uh, right, let's trigger, let's trigger. It's gonna be tight here, folks. But you can see now Vortex is an absolute champion. Dagna really is the difference there. We can already pick up Decimus before he dies. And hopefully we got all our kills done. Come on, come on, come on. Pick up Regulus right now as well. And you can't pick up Vortex yet because you got to get all your kills. But yeah, now we're cruising. Pick everyone up. And now we're kind of in business, folks. So as long as I don't mess up any of the timings, we're good to go. My apologies about before, but actually I'm, I'm not going to cut it out. I'm quite happy to keep it because I do think it's a really honest look and an honest uh, feeling that you get of what it's like doing this. I've done these many, many times at many, many different stages on many accounts. And it's still the timings are so precise. And each strategy is kind of bespoke to everyone's own account. Uh, so it's easy to forget small things. All right, let's wait, let's wait, let's wait. As long as I don't mess up this Decimus, I'm in business. Let's wait for it, wait for it. All right, right about there. Let's get a little pushback. Excellent. We'll even do a little cheesy bit of that. Come on. Very close. All right, contact, contact, contact. You can also throw your Dagna in a Rapidity set if you go to use her. And if it wasn't clear, I'm using Dagna because I don't have a Solda or, um, excuse me, because I don't have a Solda or King Hearts, obviously. Uh, if you do, you can use them. That might help you make the the thresholds for stats, uh, for tankiness for Vortex and stuff like that. But here you go. Now this is the last part. We use our little Decimus strategy. I found out way back with 219 for anyone that missed that stream. I think, I don't know if other people are doing that. I, 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 I hope I was the one that figured that out. Some people told me I was the one that figured it out. I'm not gonna take credit, but you just take those two hits. Now he dies. Now you wait a second, wait till he starts moving again. So he did his slams. Now he starts moving. Now you can place Regulus, place your best tank and place your healer. Don't get greedy. I've done it in the past. Now you can place your DPS. You can place your Dolores. You can place your Laurel. You can pick up and we're off to the races, folks. Trigger, trigger trigger why not and the last thing you can do is you because we trapped him on this square we can deploy Volka, and she does help the run go a bit faster because as long as she gets her ult up it would be nice if i put her in extra attack speed and rage regen to make it go faster but that's she's not really the point of this video however if you do want to speed it up that's a good way to do it because as soon as we get the vulnerability on the magic vulnerability she will make this a lot better you can also put baron down we'll get a little damage out of his shields if he doesn't die um it also Make sure they're not targeting Regulus in case maybe yours isn't as tanky as mine and it's and it's a close call. Let's go, we can do Laurel again and this worked out perfectly. Look at the timing with Volca. Now we can pick up, we trigger, trigger, and oh, a little late on Comet here, trigger. Let's trigger and trigger, why not? Lovely stuff and now it's slowly starting to melt away. The boss goes down a lot slower, especially without POD. Uh, than he does on other stages. But I'll show you my auto at the end when I give my concluding thoughts, because we are gonna get the W now. I'm quite happy we did it so quickly. Might as well just put Desmus down so he doesn't focus Regulus. And um, we're kinda in the clear now. Here's Laurel, we might as well go for one more. Why not, why not, why not? Trigger, really late there on our boy, trigger. And that should just about do it. We'll, we'll have this wrapped up in the last 30 seconds. So yeah, we got our second try, which is quite nice. It just shows you, uh, I was up till 4 a.m. last night. <laughs> doing other people's 220s, uh, uh, sorry, 220s and 221s. Uh, so it's, it, gets, it gets intense. It's, it's, a, it's a very precise little thing, but once you get it, you can see the stats needed are not that crazy. Um, so all in all, I'm quite happy with the run. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if anyone watches this and then you go and beat 221 be pretty excited to know if this is instantly helping people. That is why I do this. Uh, these kind of guides are not for views, right? Like they get some views, but they get way less views than more clickbaity content. This is straight up just to help the community. That's why I make content in the first place. I wanna help people do things as efficiently as possible and save everybody some money. That's kind of my mission statement here. So there you go, that is not my shortest run, so we won't save it. Let's go next, I'll show you the stats, it's pretty funny. Literally comment does all the damage. You can see a touch of damage out of the shield explosions uh, from Baron. That's basically a single DPS solution to beating 221. Uh, and you know, we only really brought one built out tank 
and one healer. So this really is the, the ultimate solution. So you only need one built out tank. You only need one built out healer and you only need one DPS. Plus Dolores, you're good to go. And Laurel, of course. So let's exit out of that. Let's see, what kind of invig did I get for my trouble? Not what I'm looking for. Um, but yeah, invigoration gear is awesome. That's the main reason you want to farm this. I will also say for the demon soldiers, let me give a very, very quick tip and then I'll show you guys the auto run. However, I got three of this guy yesterday. So I'm working on getting, getting him to level three back into battle, whatever. Let's go to demon soldiers. The fallen Templar could be argued to be the best or maybe the most important demon soldier in the game right now. And he drops from stage, uh, from gear aid two. So I can show you here if I go to upgrade and you click on him, gear raid two, and you can see I already have mine at level two. To get him to level three, I need four copies or 40 shards. I was at zero yesterday and I was farming this, not even that much, maybe two or 300 runs and I got three copies. So I was quite lucky, but you guys are gonna wanna make sure you get this Templar. So extra reason, I know people really prefer gear raid three and with solid reason, but do not neglect your gear raid two. So let's throw in that auto fight and you can see how I do it. I'll talk through it a bit. Um, this is how I speed it up. I could still optimize it and maybe I'll do that later on today. However, what's annoying with this battle more than anything, when you set your auto, you actually have to go back in and still set it. Uh, the power dominance doesn't help that much because like I said, the main reason you're able to beat it isn't necessarily because it's stats. Of course, there's minimum stats you have to hit, but it's because of strategy. So actually setting this power dominance still took me like four or five tries. Uh, set, setting this auto run with power dominance, I should say. You see at the beginning, I saved some costs and I speed it up a little bit by using arrogance. He can just solo that whole lane. He is very, very good. Uh, and now we get everyone out nice and early. Uh, and we just melt them away in the same, same kind of strategy. Um, let me know what you guys think. You, I think it would work with Zeela too. Arrogance is probably the best because of when he does the boomerang, he clears that lane really well. And the other reason to bring Arrogance in, and you'll see we also bring Wrath into this fight now. Uh, down he goes there. That was Wrath on the right. Um, Air, Wrath is just there as a Lord to buff Arrogance and then again, be, be the meat shield because uh, there's no Dagna in this version. Uh, but Arrogance helps kill the boss a lot faster at the end as you're gonna see. Uh, but pretty smooth run. I do think when you see this on 3x speed, it looks really cool. Uh, the way like these moments where we drop people and they just disappear, boom, boom, <laughs> pretty fun stuff. So now we put down our Decimus, it's the same idea. However, uh, Arrogance with his burning is gonna kill this boss faster than Comet. And then obviously the combination of the two of them makes it go really, really nice. So you see I got Arrogance down first. The ult triggers pretty quick. And now he's just gonna start melting this guy away. Power Dominance helps, don't get me wrong. But boom, 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 very nice stuff. Uh, I guess I could try to optimize it slightly. If I got this guy to be in the final square, we could put Arrogance here and Dolores here. Maybe I'll do that. And then Arrogance will benefit from Dolores' inspiration. But there you go, now Comet is completely melting this guy. Voila, that is the auto run. Guys, uh, I hope this guide is helpful. Um, please let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Let me know if this was successful for you. I've been fastidious. Like it, share it with your mom. I'll see you in the next one. Fastidious.